It seems like every NFL draft class, there has to be that one polarizing quarterback prospect. Last year, it was Anthony Richardson, a guy I defended and am still very high on. 2022, it was Malik Willis. 2021, it was Justin Fields or even Trey Lance. 2020 was Justin Herbert, and so on. You get the point. But in 2024, the most polarizing quarterback prospect by far is Michigan's J.J. McCarthy. If you ask one person's thoughts on him, they might say he's a top five pick. But then you ask, somebody else and they couldn't even imagine taking him in the first round. So my goal for this video is just to show why some NFL teams are very high on JJ McCarthy and why I believe there's a great chance he goes in the top six of this upcoming NFL draft. Jonathan James McCarthy was born in January of 2003, meaning he just turned 21 a couple of months ago, which is one of the first clues as to why teams love his potential. Just like he did in college, all JJ did in high school was win games. He spent his first three years at Nazareth Academy in Illinois. During that time, he spent two years as the starting quarterback, going 26-2 and, and winning the Class 7A state title as a sophomore in 2018. McCarthy, who was a senior during the pandemic year, had a tough decision to make. His local high school that he attended the first three years had their season canceled, so JJ had to make the decision to either not play ball his senior year or find another way. He ultimately chose to transfer to IMG Academy. Academy in Bradenton, Florida. McCarthy went on to say in an interview that it was a tough mental challenge for those four months, but it definitely prepared him for the next level at college. It was the right move to say the least. Not only did his team go 8-0, but they outscored their opponents 381-82. to It was complete domination. McCarthy threw 16 touchdowns to no interceptions and winning the 2020 National Championship with IMG. Overall, McCarthy's high school record as a starter was 34 and 2. His story of how he committed to Michigan is actually very interesting, so let's go over it quickly. McCarthy admitted he grew up as an Ohio State fan and was pretty much set on committing there. But according to McCarthy, Ohio State's head coach Ryan Day lied to his face about their recruiting plans at the quarterback position. Ohio State essentially chose class of 2021 quarterback Kyle McCord over McCarthy, which led JJ to not only develop a hatred towards his once favorite school, but soon committed to rival Michigan, which ended up being a costly decision for them because McCarthy went 3-0 against Ohio State for the next three years. Entering his freshman year at college, McCarthy was projected to be a second round pick in the NFL, whose NFL comp was Kyle Allen. Not exactly the most flattering comp. Despite the comparison, he was still a five-star recruit who would end up being a starting quarterback soon for a major Big Ten school. In 2021, he came in as a backup at times, but sat most of the year behind Cade McNamara. In his debut versus Western Michigan in a mop-up role, he had a crazy opposite hash throw that went 69 yards to the house for his first collegiate touchdown. In his sophomore year, it took McCarthy a couple weeks to win the starting job, but he did after an incredible first half versus Hawaii. He had a good season his sophomore year, completing 64% of his passes with 22 touchdowns and only 5 interceptions. Michigan made the college football playoff, but lost in the semis to TCU in a high scoring affair. Sadly for McCarthy, he had two pick sixes in that game. In 2023, McCarthy was the clear-cut starter, and it was a big year for him. A standout season playing at just 20 years old would propel him up draft boards, and it went about as well as it could, including the Wolverines going 15-0 and winning the national championship for the first time since 1997. McCarthy's numbers improved for the third year in a row, this time completing 72% of his passes for 20 22 touchdowns and this time only four interceptions. Okay, so why the hate? You have a quarterback who's improved every year, he wins games, he has good size, a strong arm, he's very young, and has a good head on his shoulders. One of the first things people pick at is his more than ideal situation, which is a funny way to assess quarterbacks because I'm even guilty of that myself, but it's almost like McCarthy gets penalized because he was on a good team. And it wasn't all perfect. Their starting right guard broke his leg in November. And it's fair to say that Michigan's offensive line was not the same in 2023 as it was the prior two seasons. You look at their game against Penn State and their offensive line was getting cooked most of that game, but they still made it work. You'll hear people say McCarthy is only good for handing the ball off, so let's look at that. Out of 107 college quarterbacks who qualified, McCarthy ranked 53 on that list in pass attempts. Most of his peers, however, ranked in the top 30 in attempts, whether it's Michael Penix, Bo Nix, 
Drake May, or Caleb Williams. McCarthy did have five more passing attempts than Jaden Daniels, but McCarthy did play in three more games. So on a per game basis, here's how McCarthy's pass attempts per game were matched up against other top quarterback prospects. McCarthy averaged a little over 22 passing attempts per game. Michael Penix averaged 15 more at a whopping 37 attempts. Bo Nix was at 33 and a half. Drake May, right around the same thing, 35.4. Caleb Williams was at 32.3, and Jaden Daniels was the closest at 27.3 attempts per game. As you can see, the difference in passing volume between JJ and his peers is pretty staggering. But should we penalize him because he played on a good team that was playing from ahead and relied on a good running game and good defense? I think this is the first misconception people have about McCarthy's NFL value in the first place. You are not drafting him to be top 10 based on what he did in college. You look at his numbers and sure, they're good, but they're not eye-popping good. What you're drafting McCarthy for and what you should be drafting anyone for, for that matter, is what he can become. Just like any other quarterback prospect, you're buying into the traits, and in McCarthy's case, Case, you're buying into the fact he's barely 21 and still has room to grow. Is this where we go wrong with evaluating quarterbacks though? Do we all look for just the next Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen type prospect, when in reality those guys do not pop up as often as we'd like? Is it foolish to buy into a guy who does what the coaches ask of him to do and goes out there and executes the game plan? It's almost like we'd rather have McCarthy play on a bad team just to see him play from behind in almost every game. But isn't there some level of comfort knowing that if you put McCarthy McCarthy in a stable situation that he's usually going to do enough to win. I mean, you look at the teams right now that are most interested in him, and you have to realize that those teams are good places to land. Minnesota with Kevin O'Connell, the Giants with Brian Dable, or Denver with Sean Payton seem like the most likely landing spots for McCarthy. And while I'm more pro McCarthy than the average person, I'd be a fool not to think that the team he ends up on does not have a massive effect on how his career will turn out. Once again, we all want that Josh Allen type quarterback who can excel in just about any less than ideal situation, but that's not the case for most starting quarterbacks. But enough about the team and the situation. What else does JJ bring to the table as an individual? Let's start with the size. Height and weight wise, he's right around the average frame for a quarterback, 6'3", 219 pounds. And whether that 219 is legit or not, I don't know, but that was his combine weight. His hand size is a little concerning, only at 9 inches, but that's the same size that Joe Burrow, Ryan Tannehill, Hill and Jared Goff have, who have all had success in this league. Arm strength wise, it's a little tricky to evaluate. He did throw 61 miles per hour at the combine, which is a number not reached by most people ever. Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, Joe Milton, DTR, or a few others that reached that mark. So while JJ has great velocity on his ball, it does not mean he's perfect. It's a nice thing to have because you really can't teach it, it's a physical trait, but he still needs to work on having better touch and his deep ball completion rate. JJ's athleticism and feel in the pocket is probably something else teams will like about him. His three-cone drill was incredible and by far the best of any quarterbacks who participated at the combine. He tested better than most running backs, wide receivers, corners, which is really saying something. I feel like back in the day when the game revolved around pocket passers, this would not matter as much. Like who gives a damn if Peyton Manning had a great three-cone score. But in today's game where movement skills and escapability for a quarterback matters, so much, I think his three cone drill is evident for how nimble he really is. As for McCarthy's accuracy, there's definitely some nuance to it. It seems like everything short to intermediate, he's very solid. Even deep over the middle, I would say he's above average. He'll occasionally sail a ball too high or throw behind the receiver, but it's not enough for me to raise a red flag. The glaring issue for McCarthy right now, at least, seems to be his deep passes outside of the numbers. These are some of the toughest throws to execute, and they take perfect loft and and precision, but I do think it can be improved. An added bonus is he's pretty good at throwing on the run, and in some cases he gets very creative, like these two examples. In a two minute drill versus Indiana, he rolled out to his left being chased down by a defensive end, and didn't have time to turn his body and make a throw. Instead, he makes this really awkward sidearm shovel pass to his running back, who picks up the first down and nearly scores. Another example is this third and 10 from the same game, where essentially a free rusher gets through and JJ has to leave the pocket immediately. Instead of throwing it away or putting his head down and picking up the five yards, he tells his tight end mid rollout to turn up field, which leaves the Indiana DB in a two on one situation. He leaves his man and McCarthy loops the pass over for a huge play that ends up in a 
touchdown. It's creativity like this that intrigues GMs even more when it comes to his game. So yeah, there's plenty of things that McCarthy has going for him. The size, the arm, the pocket maneuvering, the pocket awareness, the creativity, the athleticism, the youth, the coachability. But what are some things he's not that good at and definitely has to polish at the next level? I've already hinted at a few, but here are my main concerns. The lack of touch passes is definitely a concern for me. I feel like it can be fixed, especially when his footwork is hopefully modified at the next level. If every throw was an intermediate pass over the middle, he'd be fine. But in times where JJ needs a pass with hang time or touch, he still puts way too much velocity on it. There's also some times he'll take some bad sacks. I do like his pocket maneuvering for the most part, he does have a good feel for it and a good internal clock. But I've seen a few occasions where he'll try to play hero ball and lose some extra yards and take a bad sack. The deep accuracy can be better of course, but once again I think it can be fixed. He does have an extremely wide base when throwing deep balls, and his back foot drags as well. Not that I'm some quarterback mechanics expert, but it does hinder his ability to put loft on the ball. Former college quarterback and NFL scout Nate Tice seems to agree here. With McCarthy, his misses seem to stem from a tendency to overstride on throws, creating an elongated base which can affect the quarterback's balance and the angle of the front shoulder. His deep balls at the combine showed some promise in terms of touch and loft, but we need to see it happen in games. Aside from that, there's not really too many other concerns for me, and while it's an intangible thing and maybe means nothing at all, there is something to be said about a guy who's only lost three games since the beginning of his high school career. Some guys just know how to win. And yeah, it comes down to who's on the team around him, but he'll rarely lose you a game. It kind kind of reminds me of Jimmy Garoppolo in San Francisco when they were at their peak. Jimmy was never a top 10 quarterback in the league, maybe in 2019 you can make the argument, but he still went 38-17 and 17 when starting for the Niners in his career, and they probably should have won a Super Bowl with him. It's going to be interesting to see which team takes McCarthy and whether it's via trade-up or the team stands pat. Rumors have circulated about Minnesota especially or even Denver trading up to get him, or maybe even the Giants take him at 6th overall if he's still on the Board. I'm not saying McCarthy is the second coming of Brady, but I do think he's a little disrespected by some people. He's definitely more than just a guy who hands the ball off. I'll definitely keep an eye on him during his NFL career and maybe very closely if he does end up on the Giants, but hopefully for him he does land in a good environment. That'll do it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe for more NFL content and I'll talk to you guys next time.